Hey, welcome to Thirsty Amigos. Thanks for joining me on this episode. On this episode, I'm going to be going over some footage that Amigo Eric and I filmed at a meeting that we went to uh, for the first ever meeting of the Colorado Agave Collective. Uh, this is a group that was formed um, by some uh, a local uh, agave enthusiast here in the Denver area, uh, Morgan and Ryan and uh, Nathan. And um, I think Sean is in there too. I think they're the founders of it. But I know Morgan and Ryan, uh, they have a, a, a social media called uh, A Guy, A Girl, and A Trail. And they're getting into um, agave spirits really hard and heavy. And uh, Nathan is the owner of Need to You, a Mexican restaurant uh, down on a University in uh, Denver. And uh, he hosted the uh, meeting there at his restaurant. His uh, general manager, uh, Sean, uh, we met, uh, Amigo Eric and I met at um, uh, the Bola Zole, and we were talking to him. They had uh, their sign set up. Morgan and Ryan were out mingling, but we didn't get a chance to talk to them much at Bola Zole. But we talked to Sean, and we told him we were going to be coming to the meeting, and um, we we're really looking forward to it. And he was he's really enthusiastic. Sean's a great guy. You'll see him in the video toward the end um talking uh on the microphone and then uh so that night we went down there we uh got checked in we met we met up with um uh papa t tequila tequila paul you've seen him on the channel a couple times so it was nice to see him we haven't seen him in a little bit and hopefully get him on the channel soon and uh we got into the restaurant they um it was from six to eight the two hours that they had set there's you'll see uh they're they're going to be real aggressive with their tastings and stuff but i think it was plenty of time nice spread you'll see it um uh the restaurant is really cool i'll show you some pictures here um <clears throat> uh need to you uh really neat restaurant um i love the setting you'll see some of the agave spirits that they have their tequila mezcal uh in the back bar and everything and uh their chips and salsa were delicious and stuff so great staff a neat, neat decor. I really like the decor of it. And so we got there, Ryan, um, you'll see in the video, welcomed everyone. I uh, got acquainted with everyone tell, going over what we were going to do that night. And then, uh, Morgan and Ryan took over and they were going to, uh, they walked us through a, uh, tasting. It was a blind tasting, uh, that they were going over. So they walked us through how to taste. Uh, Morgan really went over how to taste and everything. She had some really good uh, pointers and I'll, we'll highlight them in the video of, um, of, of your palate. Her palate's really refined and you, she had some really good um, suggestions for it. Um, I distilled the whole evening down into half an hour. I know that's still a long video, but watch it. It's well worth it. A lot of information in here. And uh, it was a fun time. It went <clears throat> by really quick. Uh, so we blind tasted the first one, but they, she revealed it right away. So everyone kind of knew what to expect going forward. So then we had, so we had four tequilas. The first one we did together as a group, a collective, Morgan and Ryan walked us through it. We revealed it at the end and you'll see this. And then the uh, tequilas two, three, and four, we blind tested, tasted and tested ourselves. And then uh, we, uh, as a group, we all went over some of our uh, tasting notes and at the very end they revealed it. So, uh, it was a fun time went by really quick. I'm really looking forward to next month's, uh, meeting and uh if you get a chance check them out colorado agave collective um and i'll try to put the, all the links in the description below and then a guy a girl on a trail for morgan and ryan and i'm not sure i'll have to get with nathan and see about his uh if he has a social media or not he's a really cool guy and sean too the general manager of need to you awesome awesome person man they're great so it was really fun so i want you guys to uh sit back watch it at your leisure you know it's a long video but uh, we'll get through it together it was a fun time, and um, we look forward to more. All right, guys, uh, I'm going to drink something right here. Uh, keep this blind to you guys. All right, salud. That's good. Cool. So I'm going to use the microphone just a little bit easier. We've had three huge events this week, and uh, this is kind of the tail end of them, so not a lot of us in the industry have our voices left. But luckily it's around agave and our passion and our love. 
Um, so it's been an easy week, as hard as it's been. In fact, I was talking to Nick Touch, originally from Williams and Graham, if you don't know, and then uh, worked for Tequila Ocho for a long time, and then just now was working for Valo Tequila. And at the Bowl of Zoe, we ran into each other and said, he's like, man, I worked 70 hours this week, but when I stepped into this room full of agave lovers, all that disappeared. So, and that's kind of the thing when it comes to agave, is when you fall in love with it, you fall in love with it, and it means something to you, and you find energy from it like any other passion that you have, right? So I wanna welcome you guys, everybody. My name is Nathan. I'm, uh, my wife and I own Nituyo. Uh, this is Nituyo. The name means nor yours, implying it's neither mine, implying it's ours together. We're very proud of being a very inclusive place. Uh, when you come into our place, you can look across the room and you can usually see like any race, creed, color, that's the way we want it. Um, and we'll fight desperately for that kind of like conceptualness and that openness for folks. We believe in that, okay? Here. This is 100% what we want the, the Colorado Agave Collective to be is 100% consumer driven, okay? So yes, we're gonna have brands that'll come in here occasionally and they're going to represent what they do and I've, we have a lot of people reaching out already and I told them, yeah, you get five minutes of our two hours, okay? Five minutes. And people are, can come up in their social time and they can come and talk to you about your juice, but be prepared if the people don't like your shit, I want them to say that to that person. And of course, everybody who I say that to is like, oh, I was born for this, you know? <laughs> yeah, you're all born for it until somebody tells you that your shit sucks, right? <laughs> so what, what we're envisioning for this in a grand scale is one, to be a place that we can just talk agave. Um, opening here, and then originally opening Adelita's and Ladonia and Palenque and Littleton, um, I have a lot of people coming from all over the front range that want to talk agave, both tequila and mezcal. And the conversations are amazing, the enthusiasm is amazing. I just don't have the time to sit down with everybody, but this is the right place to fucking do it, okay? We have the right stuff on the shelf. We've had delegations come in in the last month that say we may not have the best shelf in the country. I'm gonna try to keep it that way. Loyal to the juice, not, consumer, not, not brand driven at all. It's 100% consumer driven. That being said, if you don't see something that you like from this club, you bring it to my attention, okay? Because this is only what we make of it together. That's the whole idea. I've been drinking mezcal for the last 15 years and it's a very different spirit in large part to tequila. Okay, there's a lot more going on at times. Um, I had to be reintroduced to tequila and I have fallen back in love with it because of the passion of the people in Colorado on the front range coming to talk about it, coming to tell me the different things about it and now I've fallen in love with tequila all over again. However, because mezcal is so much bigger and powerful on the palate, I've had to kind of relearn my palate. So I'm here with you guys. My intention with this group is to be the number one tasting room in the fucking country. I want, when a brand releases, I want this, somebody to say, did you pass the Colorado Agave Collective fucking tasting room? <laughs> if you didn't, then fucking let me know when you do, okay? <laughs> That's the kind of thing that I'm looking to develop here. All right, so there's a lot of things that are happening and there's a lot of great enthusiasm and each club, both on the front range and nationally, will be what those members want it to be but that's what I'm looking for from this club, okay? I welcome you here, my arms are wide open. I'm a better person for being closer to Mexico, to being enculturated there, to marrying a Mexican. I'm finally Mexican, as my wife hates me saying, but I fucking <laughs> say all the time. Fucking right, dude. And so, it's just been a blessing. I grew up in a very cultural kind of um, family or whatever, but it's from a different culture, and then when we left from that hometown, it was Mexico that brought me back to my roots in a large part, okay? I will, you can rest assured on one thing, I'm gonna do everything I can to find as much information as I can about these fucking products so that we're not drinking and sharing and sharing with our best friends and our lovers the things that we don't love ourselves or that are brought here in, in the wrong direction. Sometimes we get misled, sometimes we know exactly what's going on, but we're gonna do this shit together, I fucking promise you, okay? So, the, what the Agave Collective is gonna be moving forward, Six o'clock, we're gonna call it the two hardest hours in agave. Mm -hmm. And the reason we're gonna call that, it's a play on words. Two, it's gonna be all fucking business. So moving forward, those that know, we start at 6.15 and we end at eight o'clock. We don't end at 8.15, 8.30, 11 o'clock because I respect 
your wife, your husband, or whoever might be waiting at home for you. I don't need them to worry about you or hate me to you for doing this kind of shit, okay? So we're going to start hard and we're going to end hard, okay? I also get a little tired of people not respecting each other's time, so I want to respect your time. So 6 o'clock to 8 o'clock every first Monday. And then the second thing is, is we're going to do what we can to become the best tasting room in America. And it's going to be a lot of like, I don't know, maybe some embarrassment, maybe some arguing. Those are all fucking good things, okay? We want to talk about it. We want to get used to saying the words. Um, and if you don't know what I'm talking about, you're going to find out very soon because we're going to start with the program today. We're going to do every single first month. We're going to have a blind tasting. That's going to be kind of the rudder that stirs this ship. I'm going to bring good stuff in, not so good stuff. You can count I'm not going to bring in the terrible shit, okay? I promise you that. If you ever <laughs> want to talk brands, I'm your guy. But it's going to be a way that we're all democratically experiencing the same things, talking about them, and then at the end there will be, there'll be a reveal, okay? So we're going to learn something about ourselves every single time that we step into this room. But that's what this is going to be about because you can't fucking build your palate unless you're willing to take chances, willing to say things in front of people, willing to learn about other, from other people, and willing to talk about it most generally, okay? But we're going to do all that together, so you're in a very supportive room. So we'll always have a blind tasting, always 6 o'clock to 8 o'clock. We're not going to do food because of the way that it affects the palate. We're only going to offer beer, ranch water, and any tequila you want from the shelf because, again, not, we don't want to mess with the palate. We only have two hours. We're going to start today with a general kind of how to approach tequila, and then we're going to all taste something together in a guided tasting. This is Ryan and Morgan, and the reason that they're part of the collective is that they helped me fall in love with tequila once again, and I'm very grateful, and they have beautiful palates and a bunch of enthusiasm, and that, that's what we're looking for. So today it's going to be short, but moving forward, you have 30 days in between this and the next meeting to do your own fucking work. And if you fall out of favor two or three months because you ain't been doing the work, that ain't my fucking fault because this shit's going to be moving. <laughs> Again, we want to be the best tasting room in America, and if we don't get there, we'll be fucking close. I promise you that. Okay? So, that being said, thank you for being here. We're really excited. I recognize most of you guys. And, um, again, talk to me about things you want, things you don't want. Give it a few months so we can get our bearings, but then really please let us know, okay? That being said, I'm going to turn over to Ryan. Again, thank you for being here, and long live Agave. All right, I'm Ryan. Um, we, being a Colorado Agave collective, we're going to cover Agave spirits in general. Um, not all of them from Mexico. Not all of them will be Mexican Agave spirits. So it'll do U.S. stuff. I have some that are from South Africa. Um, over time, it's going to get more and more broad. We'll, we'll go into more and more things. Um, when we talk about wanting this to be independent so we can kind of pick and choose what we want to taste, it's because we want to set up themes behind it. So, so often you go to a tasting where you can show up and taste tequila, and it's going to be a disposable condiment container in a liquor store that's handed to you, and that's your tasting. Like, that's not what we're looking for. I mean, look around. This place is beautiful. The setting's nice. We have things set up, ready to go. Um, you know, capitas on the table. If you lift up the top one, there's coffee beans under there because coffee beans are something you can smell to help kind of cleanse the palate. Um, chips, something super neutral. But for this initial event, we're going to do just Blanco tequila. Um, when you look at agave spirits, that's blown up. They're actually expecting this year for agave spirits to pass vodka as being the, the number one spirit type being sold. Um, so we're gonna do a guided tasting of, I think that's going out right now. Um, this one is not gonna be a blind. This, we're just gonna talk about tasting in general, how to go about tasting, good practices, things like that. Um, Morgan over here is, kind of renowned for her palate. Um, <laughs> she gets a lot of credit from a lot of people because she's, yeah, she's pretty dialed in with, with tastings. So she is going to go over the tasting. Um, we're going to taste the first one as a group, and then we're going to go into a blind from there with the next three. 
So what I was thinking is that, so she's gonna walk through a tasting with you and then once we do the blind, I'm gonna turn the music up. You guys are gonna get one at a time. So this will be your first one, that's spirit number one. She'll talk about that, we'll go and taste them together. Then two through four, you're gonna be doing it yourself. You're gonna be taking notes, okay? That's what the pen and the paper's for. So you can do it with the nose and the palate, but there's also viscosity and color, anything else that you might notice. And we'll cover all these things in some general way moving forward, but these are things that you notice. For me, when I started out with my palate, the first thing that I said, do I like this shit or do I not like this shit? Am I gonna drink it again? You know what I mean? So that's kind of where I started. So if you're starting from there, yes. If you're not starting from there, then you have, um, you can write down any of the descriptors that you feel are present, but if you need a little bit of aid, that's what the Patron wheel is for, okay? Um, and we want to give Patron their due credit for making this fucking wheel, okay? Um, the bar business is a consumer-driven business, so you know when Patron didn't do things right, we all boycotted them and they changed their shit, so now they're okay. Yeah. So one of many stories like that, but it's cool that we have a lot of power as both consumers and as bartenders and restaurateurs because if we say and we don't want to sell something, or maybe more apropos would be, there's a reason Fort Lays is the number one brand in the country. It's because they bring every bartender that's in the business that can get it to Mexico, they'll put you up for three or four days and their bill, and they'll teach you about it, and they've been doing it for 15 years. So um, anyway, it's a consumer-driven business, so you guys are as important as anybody else. So she's gonna walk you through a blind taste, or the tasting with yeah. this does, tequila. Does any table feel like they want another one of these? We have three more to share. <laughs> Yes, okay. Or do you want to walk around? All right, so she's going to do this. We're going to do the blind tasting. I'm going to turn the music up. And then at the end, what I'm looking for to kind of get this thing kick started is we're going to go around and I'm going to ask three descriptors of each of the, of at least three descriptors from each person publicly. Okay? So it doesn't matter if you're right. Even if you say Kup Tagabi, just get used to saying something out loud. Um, and then if you agree with that person, or if you have a note that references that person, give them a shout out. Be like, yeah, Robecho, that's right, motherfucker. <laughs> Something like that, so that they know that, and, and sometimes it's okay if even one person in the room agrees with you. You know what I mean? Because it's a delicate, maybe an essence of something. You know what I mean? Uh, that being said, let's get in the habit of saying things out loud and get in the habit of supporting each other, because that's how we're gonna fucking do this shit in the end. So, all right, here's Morgan, yay. Yay. <laughs> Hello, how's everybody doing? Good. Good. Love it, okay. Um, I need everybody to just follow me and take a swish of water around your mouth, okay? I'm gonna do the same. Everybody's been having some beers, some ranch waters, whatever, we need to rinse that all out. Um, do I have a pork? No. Do I get a pour? You're describing. <laughs> okay. So, uh, we're definitely in my nerd zone right now. This is my favorite thing to do. I love this. Uh, so I'm going to try and be brief. I'm going to try and, like, not go all night. And I'm sorry, like, you know, you guys need to, like, give me the, the time signal if I'm rambling because I'm serious. I love this stuff. And I can, I can talk forever about it. Um, okay, so, you know, Nate started out talking about how this is going to be the hardest two hours of the month, right? Tasting, tasting is hard. Tasting is work. And tasting is not drinking. So let's keep that in mind, right? Like, we're not here tonight to drink. Drinking's fun. You can do that some other time. But tasting is actually a real study. It's something that, you know, like, you should, you should be done with tonight and you should need a minute. Like, it takes a lot of focus to do what we're about to do, okay? So, um, there are a lot of stages involved in tasting. You don't just shoot it back. Um, we're gonna start just by looking at it. That's all we're gonna do to start, okay? So, I want everybody to pick up your glass and just tip it into the light a little bit. So we're looking for what I like to, I like to remind myself, it's CBCB. So it's clarity, brilliance, color, and body. Those are the things that we're looking at. And let me just say, 
that going forward, when you do this on your own, this should take like five seconds. And if it takes longer than that, you're just being obnoxious. <laughs> Nobody actually has to stare at their glass in the light for like 10 minutes. That's ridiculous. Yep. I guarantee you, you guys are already doing things in your habits, like your hobbies, the things you do for fun that are influencing your palate. And there are things that you smell every day, whether you're a woodworker, you love working on your car, you love gardening, you love cooking, whatever it is, there are smells in your everyday life and the habits that you have already formed and the things you already love to do that are influencing and informing the palate that you have. And they will come into play the more you start paying attention to it when you start really tasting. And again, this is tasting, not drinking. Tasting is hard work. Tasting is something that you have to think about and pay attention to. So the more you start telling yourself, I'm paying attention, I'm thinking about this, this is work, this is a project for me, the more you're, you're starting to build up a database or like a Rolodex in your head of like what all of this is. But, all right, this one wasn't supposed to be a blind. Uh, this is the Casca Queen Blanco. Yeah. Uh, Casca Queen. Who loved it? Raise your hand if you really like this. No, title. <laughs> no Costco. <laughs> it was the one or two you It was number one. Uh, one, one. So one two, two, three, and four are going to be a blind tasting. No. Okay. Yeah. So. Okay. So, so number one was. Oh, this looked really good. Yeah. Was it just the green bottle? He's going to grab the bottle to show you the Cascaween. So Cascaween rated number one distillery in the world. This is their Blanco. This is their well. This is, yeah, I mean, to keep the maker, I'm going to reference that probably. Um, but unbelievable. You've, it probably retails for a seven fifty at... $40? No, $30? $30, $40? $30, $30, $30, $30, $30, $30, $30, $30, $30, $30, $30, $30, $30, $30, $30, $30, $30, $30, $30, $30, $30, $30, $30, $30, $30, $30, $30, $30, $30, $30, $
um, when we're talking to additives and like things that we don't want to see in tequila, we're going to be transparent about it. But also, as a consumer, I get a lot of tequilas through this door that tell me one thing, and I have to rely on my palate or those that I trust to get me past what they're telling me. It's a nimble business, because if I put the wrong thing on my shelf, some of the right people are gonna tell me that I'm doing the wrong thing. So it's kind of like a tricky thing, and so I'm selfish in the way that I'm building this collective because you guys are gonna help me make sure that this shelf never suffers, you know what I mean? I'm going to rely on you, and there's very few people that I trust when it comes to this, because like I said, a lot of people have interest in this tequila, that tequila, I'm an importer, I'm a distributor, or whatever, okay? And God bless it, it's just not where I'm at, so. Uh, that being said, so I think we should reveal, or should we maybe see some qualities about each of the tequilas? Let's, let's yeah, talk, talk, first. talk first. Okay, talk. so Thank we're gonna go around, right. and I want three words from every person, at least about number one, number two, number three, number four, it doesn't have to be the same of all, or whatever, but let's do it, and if you hear something you agree with, Give him a, hey, yeah, that's right, motherfucker. <laughs> Whatever, okay? Whatever your culture fucking does, okay? So <laughs> we want to respect all that shit. So we're going to start with you, all right? So let's go. Go through all four, just three uh, Just give me three descriptors and tell me which one you're talking about. Or so pick one. You don't have to pick one. You can, you can you just three descriptors, and you can talk about any tequila you want, or all, or every tequila, or just the one. Okay, we're getting a lot of floral number three for sure. Right, yeah. like, that's awesome. Yeah. Okay. Um, two was uh, it was kind of different in that we thought it was more savory vegetable. And if you kind of backed away from it, you smell like chicken soup. And so you got those vegetables. Yeah. But then we couldn't put our finger on, there was a root vegetable in there we couldn't really put our finger on. Um, maybe asparagus or some mushrooms, something like that. Um, number three, probably the least favorite, it had a nose, you know, lime, citrus, grapefruit initially. And then it had a super oily mouthfeel, real okay. oily. And in, in the touch, if you would touch it, it okay. just... You could rub your fingers for yeah. you know, a good 30 yeah. seconds and it stayed oily. So I felt like there was kind of like some glycerin. Something yeah, like that. wow. <laughs> this is funny. Yeah, it's made the fucking room. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Cool. But, you could, but you could feel the difference and you saw it. And then yeah. the, I think the fourth one, it was complex. So as you kind of had a longer finish and you would kind of, it would change just a little as you go. And I noticed uh, baking spice, some apple. And then people mentioned the tobacco, like a leather, not a brand new leather, but worn leather tobacco kind of okay. goes to it. Cool. All right. Sir. Um, one and four are my favorites. Yeah. I, um, here, here. Here. On the nose on two, I got chicken bouillon. It was savory. <laughs> it was real <laughs> vegetal, wow. I thought. Um, I th um, on the nose on number three, I got a bouquet of rose. Roses with the stems and everything, so it was real floral, so citrus on it. Um, the nose on number four, I got a lot of like brown sugar and some tobacco. I did, I do agree. Number four is more the most complex on the finish, and I got like tobacco, like a cigar type okay. kind of flavor. Great. Yep. All right, so great. I got, I got on number two, I got all kinds of on the nose. I got, gra I got all the way from grass to. Pasta sauce. I don't know why I was thinking like Italian. Like it was, it was killing me because I was like, oh, I can drink it. I can do. It. I have pasta with this. I don't know. Um, number three on the palate. I was think, like, I got the oily, but like my initial taste was buttery because like I could feel that on my tongue, so it just felt like melted butter on my tongue. And then on number four, I got. I definitely got the cigar. Cigar like like a cacao almost type thing. It's like that keeps coming up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. that's nice. exactly why we do this shit. On the uh, on the pasta sauce, were you getting more of the herby tomato or like a weird mixture of the both? More like the herby tomato. Okay, like so the, like, yeah. like an actual mixture of yeah. like tomato yeah. sauce. Yeah. Like not just the herb, not just tomato, yeah. but like the actual combination of yeah. both. Yeah. Interesting. I like that. 
Right. It says Cincinnati Bengals. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Love it. Hey. We'll see you next year. Perfect. All right. Yeah. We're gonna wrap it up here. <laughs> All right, guys. Time to so, reveal. Bottle reveal. Okay. Number one, obviously, the Cascaweed Blanco. Cascaweed Blanco. 80 proof. 80. Uh, yeah. 40% Blanco. That's the one you can probably pick up for 26 bucks for 750. Number two. You ready? Number two. Don Falano. Don Falano. Oh, Blanco. wow. Super polarizing. Oh, okay. Wow. You either, apparently, you either love or fucking hate this tequila. Cody <laughs> called it. Cody called it. Oh, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> I like you love it. Oh, love it. Love it. Crazy, right? And this is exactly why we did this. Yeah. <laughs> All right, you guys ready? Number three. Number three. The one I have is the Dos Angeles. Dos Angeles. Oh. And this, right. this is new to market, a new knob. Um, they again polarize it. I think it has a very like either love it or hate it. Uh, there's a sweetness, there's a grassiness, there's a little vegetableness to it. There's a lot of comments about floral. Yeah, about oh, yeah. The floral. I mean, that, yeah. that might have been very floral. Cool. Cool. Very cool. I agree. But it goes to oh, show it was okay. And then number, number four. four. A lot of people seem to like number four, yeah. which Woo! is by far the cheapest thing we drink. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Cimarron. Cimarron. Yeah. Cimarron. Yeah. Cimarron. Yeah. Really? Which, which, by the way, is the best well tequila in a yeah. 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 And it's yeah. also yeah. from the same distillery as Don Falada. So yeah! Wow. Wow. We carry the good shit! So. We carry the good shit! Yeah. 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 Everything is 40. Everything is 40. Yeah! yeah. yeah. Everything is out of free. free. Yeah. Everything's yeah. 100% out of free. All right? Wow. Hey, wow. on the way out, could you sign the poster yes. with a black marker? Because this is the first oh. event that we're going to do. All of it. Cool. We're going to collect, take a picture of your tasting sheet. We're going to collect them, and we're going to keep them and archive them for the first year. And then we're going to do something special with them after that. Um, the QR code for the donation. If you don't feel like it, no big deal at all. Just know that we're just trying to cover the booze and the chips. That's it. We don't give a shit otherwise. And otherwise, we really appreciate you being here. I put and those again, two people oh, on there. Sean wants to say something real quick. Yeah, that'll be nice. very quick. My name's Sean. I get the pleasure of being the general manager here at Nate Carina's amazing restaurant. Um, just want to say thank you to everyone who came out. Also, they are not going to say it themselves because they're amazing people. But can we all give a really big fucking round of applause for Nate Carina? Woo! Woo! Allowing us to do this here and giving us all the opportunity to come together and realize that there are there are dozens of us, all right, dozens of us that love agave. Um, and, and, uh, but it's growing, it's growing. The fastest growing spirit in the uh, states right now. Um, and this is literally the the foundation. This is the starting point of something amazing, and we really appreciate you guys being part of it. Yeah. Um, invite your friends. We I'm I'm guessing we're gonna be here for two or three months, and then I've got another venue picked out where we can really like spread out a little bit. But again, we're gonna follow the same format: six o'clock to eight o'clock. To respect your time, your significant other's time. Um, thank you for being here. If you want to mingle a few minutes, that's cool. Don't take too long. Okay. <laughs> All right. I'm really glad you guys are here. Great job, everybody. Signing on the way out. Fucking right. Woo! Yeah. Yeah. Oh! Oh! Okay, so like I said, fun night. Here's a look at some of the decor and the agave spirits that they had in Muscal and Tequila and everything. Great bar. Looked awesome. So, yeah, thanks for joining us, guys. See you next time. Salud.